This is amazing! Be sure to watch to the end for the surprising conclusion. Your brain has the incredible ability to learn and infer new algorithms, something that current AI struggles to replicate. Not just obvious things like how to tie your shoes, but more abstract, computer-like things. Your brain can perform loops, conditional branches, and even modify its own content. With these fundamental computerish abilities, your brain can theoretically learn to do almost anything. AI today can't do this, but it could. I'll walk you through an example algorithm you've learned, which your brain executes so seamlessly you aren't even aware of it. This will showcase the human brain's ability to program itself by learning new algorithms and illustrates the scope of programs your brain can execute and the instruction set it must use. Many of our frustrations with AI stem from its limitations compared to the incredible flexibility of the human brain. Let's dive into the mechanics of your brain and see how this knowledge can help advance the next generation of AI. I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. In addition to AI work, I've developed software for several neurological test instruments and neural simulators, and along the way, learned a lot about the capabilities and limitations of biological neurons and how your brain must work to do the things it does. I founded the Future AI Society to pursue these ideas, and we're in the process of writing all aspects of these into the open source Brain Simulator 3. And if you join for free, you'll get announcements of our online conversations. To understand human behavior and improve AI, it's essential to understand the basics and observe the simple everyday actions that shape our lives. Unlike the rapid top-down evolution of AI, which often focuses on complex data and algorithms like playing chess or writing a YouTube script, human behavior is rooted in fundamental and often subconscious abilities, many of which we learned as children. By examining these, we can uncover the deeper patterns that govern our intelligence and interactions. In this video, I'll present a problem which you can solve easily and show you how your brain likely solves it. But don't click away when you see how simple the example is. The insight here is the algorithm your brain uses, what kind of programming your brain is capable of, and how AI could improve if it could do this too. So here's the question I was asked by a member. If your brain has learned historical facts, how do you know which occurred earlier? As an example, which came first, the Norman Conquest or the Magna Carta? I'll give you a hint. The Magna Carta was signed in 1215 and the Norman invasion was in 1066. Now it's an easy question, but how do you know? In your brain, how can you compare 1066 and 1215 and conclude that 1215 is larger and therefore the Norman invasion came first, or conversely, that the Magna Carta came later? But before getting into the details, why did I choose this algorithm as an example? It seems really simple but I'll show you how things are often more complex than they appear. I know you must have learned this algorithm. The fact that your brain can learn algorithms is a key takeaway. And you learned this algorithm so well, you aren't even aware of it when you use it. It's so fast, you can answer in a fraction of a second. On the other hand, a computer can do this nearly a billion times faster, but this is just one example of many algorithms you've learned, and I'd like you to think about and suggest others. So here's an outline of the algorithm your brain must use to let you answer the question of which is larger, 1066 or 1215. I'll go through it quickly because you may have never thought that you needed an algorithm at all. Then I'll circle back with more details about how your brain must do this. 
Let's imagine a function to compare two numbers, a and b. a and b must be the equivalent of pointers to the first digit of each decimal number. Now, if number a has more digits, return that a is larger. If b has more digits, return that b is larger. Now we enter a loop. If the digit pointed to by a is greater than the digit pointed to by b, then return that a is larger, or the other way around. Then move the a and b pointers to the next digit positions, and if there are no more digits, return that a and b are equal. In the case we are looking at, there are more digits, so we go back to the beginning of the loop. This time, the digit pointed to by b is greater than the digit pointed to by a, so we return the result that b is larger. As a final note, potentially we cache the result. There are many variations on this theme which would yield the desired result, but conceptually the algorithm is more or less dictated by our decimal number system. Here's the astonishing point. With the simple abilities of getting values to and from memory, comparing them, and branching on conditions, you have the fundamentals of a computer which can do anything within the limits of its memory, of course. The question is, since you've learned this algorithm, can your brain learn any algorithm? An obvious example of your ability is to add multi-digit numbers. Can you think of others? What are the limits to your brain's algorithmic complexity? No one knows, but if we crack how the brain learns and stores algorithms, we'll know more about the brain and how we could enable similar capabilities in our AIs. Let's look at some details of this algorithm and what they reveal about your brain. There is no possibility that individual neurons or synapses can represent numbers like these. There must be a sequence of digits in some sort of symbolic notation. Now what about that greater than relationship for individual digits? Clearly in your brain, you know the relationship for any pair of single digits. You probably learned this at an early age from an input like this. When you learned to count to 10, your brain built the sequence of digits. It must have assigned a cluster of neurons to represent each of the digits, and then added some sort of next relationship between them to indicate the sequence. Interestingly, now greater than can be defined as comes later in the sequence. This means that in your brain, numbers don't need any mathematical or numerical meaning whatsoever. You can just as easily compare the words cat and dog using the similar algorithm because you know the sequence of letters in the alphabet the same way you know the sequence of digits when counting to 10. You might suggest that you can know that 3 is greater than 2 because you can visualize 2 or 3 things and determine which is more. I don't think that's how you do it though. It's a lot faster to have just memorized the answer from the Sesame Street song. Back to the algorithm. What do I mean by return anyway? The meaning is well known for a computer program. In your brain though, it likely means add a relationship between the given arguments. Wow! If you can learn an algorithm which stores a new relationship in your brain, it means that your brain can modify its own content. Can brain algorithms do anything? In this algorithm, there are only three possible return values. A equals B, A is less than B, or B is less than A. So your brain can add a relationship between the nodes representing the two numbers, indicating which came first, or perhaps that they occurred at the same time. There is a fourth possible return value, which would be the result of a comparison like this. 
In this case, the digit comparison between 6 and B would not return any relationship of earlier or later in a sequence. Similarly, consider this ambiguous question. We might speculate that any algorithm can return null or perhaps not return at all, which would be a catch-all whenever it cannot return a meaningful result and so cannot add a useful relationship. So what's really important here? You've learned this algorithm. It cannot possibly be innate because before about a thousand years ago, nobody knew this algorithm. Decimal numbers hadn't been invented yet. At some point, this mental algorithm was invented and it has been passed down from person to person ever since. A similar algorithm can be applied to alphabetization. Although computer sorts are always numeric, human sorting is clearly based on order in a sequence. You didn't learn this algorithm with hundreds or thousands of repetitions the way you might learn language or playing the piano. Someone told you the algorithm and you implemented it in your brain. It took just a few times through the process to learn it. Subsequent practice makes you more proficient, but only a few examples are needed. From a computing perspective, this algorithm uses a number of CPU-like instructions function call and return, go to, and the ability to check for a condition. Unlike a CPU, the conditions to check for are likely the existence of a relationship. And the action is to create a relationship between two given things. We could build CPUs with these capabilities, but we haven't yet. In short, neither neural networks nor large language models are intended to learn algorithms, especially from the small explanations and examples people learn from. If they could, it would dramatically extend machine intelligence. As a final astonishing observation, if you're familiar with this channel, you know that I am a proponent of enhanced graph-based structures for intelligence. But with the description I've given, I can see how we can also store algorithms within the graph itself. Think about that. Perhaps your brain doesn't have the hardware needed to plan by considering alternatives and choosing the best. Perhaps your brain just hosts a planning algorithm which does this. This would mean that your intelligence, or the intelligence of an AI, is governed not so much by the power of the hardware it runs on, but on the variety and quality of algorithms stored in it. So next time you answer any question, consider that your brain doesn't just know, it's often running beautifully complex internal programs. Interested in pushing AI capabilities closer to human level? Let's continue the conversation. Share your thoughts in the comments, subscribe for deep dives into AI and cognitive models, and let's collaborate on building the next generation of intelligent systems by joining the Future AI Society. If you do, you can participate in our online conversations, which are always illuminating. And as always, thanks for watching.